Support for the Pitch Talks podcast provided by the good beer folks at Steam Whistle, makers of Canada's premium Pilsner. Stop by the brewery before or after the game for a sample or a six-pack. Hey everybody, it's time for Pitch Talks. On this episode of Pitch Talks, Storytime Theater. Come for the beer, stay for the telltales. This time on Pitch Talks. Before we get started on today's Storytime episode, it's been a busy few weeks for the Pitch Talks staff with shows in New York, Toronto, and throughout Southern Ontario. We hosted a great one for 500 people at the Phoenix in Toronto, featuring ESPN's Buster Only, and we also threw a party for the official launch of Homestand Sports with Fox Sports' Ken Rosenthal. Now, at one point during the Q&A portion of that show, things got interesting. A fan asked about Jose Bautista re-signing with the Toronto Blue Jays and possibly one day making the Hall of Fame. Now, what followed was an impassioned, impromptu manifesto from Sportsnet's Arden Zwelling. It was a great moment, one that even inspired Rosenthal to write a column about it for Fox Sports. The link to that post is included in the notes section of this podcast. Here's a taste of what it was like in the room. So there's a rational and like reasonable side of me that says Jose Bautista is going to demand a lot of money. A big players union guy who's going to try to maximize what he can get. He wants to go to free agency and I truly believe that that's what he wants to do. I also truly believe that the Blue Jays at this point in their time as a franchise, probably don't want to get involved in a long-term, really expensive contract with a power hitter in his late 30s. That really probably doesn't seem like the rational, reasonable move for the Blue Jays to do or to make right now. But there's also a part of me that says, ask Jose Bautista what he wants and give it to him. (laughs) If, If there was ever ever a player with the skill set that could last into his late 30s and potentially even early 40s, a guy who has a low amount of kilometers on his body because he didn't really play for the first 10 years of his career, a guy who takes care of his body, does a lot of yoga, a lot of, and you can laugh, but you can ask any athlete in his late 30s, early 40s, what keeps them going? It's yoga, it's flexibility. It's that durability. A guy who this year played through a significant shoulder injury, remained productive, put up great numbers at the plates. A guy whose biggest skill and attribute as a baseball player is his plate vision and his discipline, his ability to recognize balls and strikes. When Jose Bautista says the pitch is a ball, it's It's a a fucking ball. It is. If there was ever a player that I believed in being productive as a hitter into his late 30s and early 40s, it's Jose Bautista. If there's ever a player who should be on that level of excellence already, not just in the future, already, it's Jose Bautista. Drop the mic. (laughs) It's over, man. That was awesome. So I guess you could say I'm conflicted. Wow, that was a fun night for sure. Now let's get on with the show. Is everybody comfy? Great. I'm your host, Kevin Hilliard. Pour yourself a glass and get ready to hear a collection of some of the best stories from our Pitch Talks live series. Recorded in a ton of different cities over the last little while, we've got some Tiny Tales from the Diamond featuring Dan Schulman of ESPN. Jeremy Taggart, formerly of Our Lady Peace, and much more. What you're going to hear in this episode is just a taste of what you can expect at a Pitch Talks live show. But enough of my yakking. Let's boogie. First up, we have Grantland's Jonah Carey with a great story involving himself former Expo and Red Sox great Pedro Martinez and the mayor of Montreal. Hmm, I shall say no more.
best Pedro moment or best Pedro moment? When he hit Reggie Sanders while he was throwing a perfect game and Reggie charged the mound. That is the second greatest Pedro moment. The greatest Pedro moment uh, occurred three weeks ago when <laughs> I went to Cooperstown to cover his induction. And uh, I was texting with my buddy, Tim Brittany. He's a really good beat writer for the Red Sox. And I said, what are you up to tonight? There's a bunch, you know, all the writers are in town to cover that, that bunch of Astros, writers, whatever. He says, I'm at the Pedro Martinez party. And I was wearing an Expo shirt with, like, crappy shorts, no, unshowered, flip-flops or something, with eight other people who were dressed exactly that way. And we were a few drinks in by this point. And he says, I'm at the Pedro Martinez party. And I said, I want to come to the Pedro Martinez. And I know Pedro a little bit, but like not to the point that I'm invited. But whatever, it was a Red Sox party, da 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 And he says, okay, let me ask the PR lady. He asked the PR, PR lady who knows me a little bit. She says, okay. I said, I bring, I'm going to bring a couple people. He asked, she says, okay. So I come with eight Expos drunken lunatics and we get to the party. The first thing is the PR lady comes up to me and goes, hmm. <laughs> you say, okay, you said you're gonna bring a couple of people. You didn't say you bring nine people wearing Expo shirts to a Red Sox party. Fine. Rob Manford was at the party. Like, I don't know, Gandhi? Like, this was all dignitaries. <laughs> Black tie, this is like a serious event and I look like a homeless Expos fan. And, and we're all, and, I'm, and it's open bar, so we don't care where we're going. And, and uh, we're standing there for a bit. And now I'm actually, there's a little bit of remorse that's kicking in. And Pedro's giving a talk. He's talking. He's giving a speech. And he's had a few. And um, he's talking, talking, talking. And it's all these fancy people. And he stops mid-sentence. And he sees my buddy Dave Kaufman, who's a really good radio host in Montreal, wearing a rusty sob sheet t-shirt. And he points at him and he goes, Bienvenue, mes amis! And he calls us over. <laughs> calls us over. The rest of the night was all shots and selfies with Pedro Martinez. And, and, and the kicker to this is that my buddy Dave was texting with someone all night. I'm like, well, you got a girl? What's going on over here? Blowing up, blowing up, phone, phone, phone. He says, no, I'm talking to Denis Coderre. Denis Coderre is the mayor of Montreal. There are three million people in Montreal. Denis Coderre wants to also crash the Pedro Martinez party. <laughs> so we go get him outside the party, and we bring him in, and now he's doing shots with us too. So that was good. Spectacular. And now the Fan 590's Mike Wilner is about to tell you what makes Ricky Henderson Ricky Henderson. Anybody heard the, the Ricky Henderson Olerud story? You'll remember that Ricky Henderson was with the Blue Jays in 1993 very mm. briefly. And John Olerud won the batting title that year. And apparently a number of years later, uh, I don't know where, which teams they were on. Mets. Was it Mets? Mm. Oh, they weren't together on the Mets. I think they were. were together on the Mets? Because okay. I thought it was with Ricky on first. But anyway, so if they were together on the Mets, apparently Ricky came up to Olerud and says, you wear a batting helmet on the field. And Olerud says, yeah. He goes, I used to play with somebody who wore a batting helmet on the floor. <laughs> so good. So good. And Olerud said, yeah, yeah, that was me. Do you know the, have so you heard good. the 10-year story? Yes. You can tell that one Anybody too. heard the 10-year story? Yeah. Ricky Henderson was getting on the bus with his team and, and um, wanted to, there was somebody sitting in the veteran spot, whatever. So the, the kid got up and said to Ricky, no, you sit here. You've got tenure. And he looked at him. It's a tenure. Ricky's got 20 years. <laughs> Next up on the Pitch Talk Storytime Theater, Autumn Mills and Ashley Stevenson, members of Canada's National Women's Baseball Team. They have two of the craziest baseball stories about playing overseas that I've ever heard. Take it away, Autumn. All right, so um, <laughs> in I don't know if anyone actually heard about this. It did make international news. Um, but when we were in Venezuela in 2010, um, the actual tournament was held at a military base camp. And during Hong Kong... In Caracas, so the, the Oh, Caracas, capitalists. which I believe is like the most dangerous city in South America. 
um, highest crime, highest drugs, highest everything. Uh, there's, there's no rules there, really. Anything goes. And um, during Hong Kong was playing... They're, they're, I think they were playing the Netherlands. And uh, no word of a lie, the shortstop got shot on the field. Um, she got shot in the leg. And really to this day, we don't know how, by who, where, why. Um, and they kind of just brushed it under the, under the carpet and said, okay, we're going to move to the tournament. Uh, so they put it on hold for two days, in hold. fairness, yeah. to make sure everything was safe. Yeah. And they brought in dogs to sniff to make sure there's no bombs or anything around. And then they moved the tournament. And they, they said that a, a military person was shooting in an area they may not have supposed to to be shooting, I guess, and that's how the bullet ended up on the field. Um, Hong Kong pulled out, and she was rushed home for emergency surgery. Um, but aside from people getting shot, we do have a couple other experiences as well. <laughs> so so we, have some, we have some natural disasters as well. There's been a few earthquakes, um, a tornado. So in 2005, so it was my second year on the team and Autumn's first year, so this was her uh, initiation. Um, we are in Havana, we're three days into a seven day friendly with Cuba, and uh, we just get a little notice, oh, pack your bags, you've got 10 minutes to get on this bus, we gotta evacuate. So we don't know what's going on. Category four hurricane is headed to Havana. I don't know, I'm dating myself here, I've seen the movie Twister, okay, and it's like category four is big. So I was like, this can't be good. Thankfully, I never unpack anywhere I go. I zipped it up, and I was on that bus in about 30 seconds. Um, so we head to another hotel. Uh, the eye of the storm hits at 2 a.m. Uh, I wake up in the morning, although I'm not sure I really slept, with my suitcase floating past me. There's a palm tree in my living room. Um, just the backup from the bathroom is now coming out of the toilet. We're having to go to the bathroom on the... Uh, balcony and all I remember before I went to bed that night I took my passport and the 40 US dollars that I needed to get the hell out of that place and shoved it in my bra and prayed to God that I'd wake up in the morning <laughs> and uh, and thankfully I did and I was like you can take everything else I will buy anything new just please God get me out of here so three days later after some stray dogs were around or whatever the show does go on so they fired us back to the original hotel and we finished the last like couple days of our uh, of our tournament and you know there was a couple squatters at the stadium at that point because that's where they housed some homeless people but we had extra fans and we just kind of <laughs> we just kind of rolled with it there was a guy in our dugout who smelt a little bit like I'm not sure if it was alcohol or urine or a little bit of both but he and the coach was too worried. To, we, we kept saying, Andre, like, who is that guy? And he's like, I don't know. And he wasn't about to ask him to leave. So we were like, okay. So we just kind of left him at the end of the bench. And every now and then he tried to give us high fives. So we're like, okay, well, at least he's rooting for us. So. More stories coming up on Pitch Talks. So please stand by. Like what you hear? Then check out homestandsports.com for more info on our live speaker series. You can get info on upcoming live shows, videos, merch, blogs, podcasts, and more. That's all at homestandsports.com. You can always email us at info at homestandsports.com or check us out on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter, where we are known simply as Pitch Talks. <laughs> Welcome back. Let's keep this train wreck a-rolling. Now, I hate to get all political in the middle of the Storytellers episode, but ESPN's Dan Shulman did at a recent Pitch Talks. You'll see what I mean. You want to talk about Bin Laden? Hey, wait. <laughs> I, 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 I guess a negative reputation, yeah. but... In, in other news. <laughs> um, very quickly, you want me to retell the story? Yeah. All right. 
Very quickly, ahead, I'm Danny. doing a uh, Sunday night game, Mets at Phillies, 2011. Yeah. And Bobby Valentine is sitting right here, and Oral Hershey's are sitting right there. And Bobby nudges, we, m nudges me with his elbow and shows me his phone. And I don't, I don't see who the text is from, but the text says, they just got Bin Laden. And he looks at me with wide eyes like that. And I look at him, and you know the two-one pitch, and there we and we're going, <laughs> and so, so I go on talkback, which is you push a button and you can talk to the people in the production truck without everybody on their TVs being able to hear you, and I said, do you guys have anything on Bin Laden? Did something happen? And they say, yes, we're corroborating it. Don't say anything. Just do the game. So now the two-two and foul ball and second out and whatever, and then they tell me to. Uh, they tell me that they've got them. And they said, you know, so now the game is going on. It's not like we're in a commercial break. And I'm trying to call the baseball game as I find out that the number one most wanted man in the world has, a, has reportedly been captured and killed. Now, uh, this is as an aside. I have no training to do any of this, but, uh, but I have literally no training to do that during, in, in the midst of a baseball game. But it became a surreal experience because, because of phones within 30 seconds, Everybody in the ballpark in Philadelphia, with the exception of the ballplayers who were in the dugouts, knew that they had gotten Bin Laden because somebody's watching at home on CNN or whatever, and they call their cousin who's at the game. And the crowd, within 30, maybe 60 seconds, started chanting like a USA hockey crowd, like you would see in Miracle on Ice or something like that. USA, USA, and the players have no idea what's going on <laughs> because the game is still going on. And, and meanwhile, I'm saying stupid things like, fouled back, counts two and one, you know, and um, of all the nights I've, you know, you do live TV, and, 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 you know, this is a point that should be lost. It's live TV with no script. A lot can go wrong, and thank God I haven't run into major, I've run into a couple of minor icebergs over the years, but no major ones yet. Um, but this was, uh, I was as unprepared to do this as anything else. So eventually we just said, turn over to your ABC News affiliate and they'll have the latest. And having Bobby Valentine with us, who was the manager of the Mets during 9-11 at the time, and was very, very visible and very involved in the relief efforts, actually was a great help, uh, help to me. But, uh, you know, the real world broke out there in the middle of a baseball game. And I was, uh, it, it was a, a memorable night to say the least. So. Now raise your hand if you knew that Jeremy Taggart, former Our Lady Peace drummer and half of the Taggart and Torrance podcast team, shout out to Jonah Torrance, what, what, has also put in time as a major league bat boy. Take a listen. I was actually bat boy for the, J, uh, for the, the Red Sox twice and the, the Yankees once through Johnny Damon who allowed me to do that, which was ridiculous, but sitting in the dugout and Doc pitched all three of those games that I was bat boy on the other team for and all the starting pitchers of those of the Yankees or the Red Sox would watch him like that's how good Doc was that he got the you know attention of everybody who was great and we lost three of those three games in a row so I was like 0 for 3 as a bat boy and I never did it again Johnny was a big fan of music, and uh, he just, uh, once I got to be friends with him, I would just kind of go watch games. And I, as a kid, I was always wanting to get as close to the game as possible, and there's no better position than Bat Boy to watch a baseball game. And, and I had no idea how much work was involved to be a Bat Boy. <laughs> like, when you come in, you, you have to, not only the, the, play, the, the batter on deck, but the, you know, the on deck and in the hole, like you have to keep like three people on check at all times and the backup bats and weights and stuff like that. And they, I tell you what, baseball players, they look at you, they look at a bat boy like a pawn of all pawns. You are the low man on the totem pole. And they just like, hurry up. Everything is just hurry up. thing about you know millionaire athletes is they all want to be taken care of without question so you're stressing out a little bit like you're trying to keep three or four things that you can't really watch the game but it's you're right there you're right in the middle of it I, and uh 
Uh, Robinson Cano thought I was f so funny looking, like some, you know, <laughs> guy with long hair in a bat boy suit. He, so every time I looked at him, he'd just start laughing at me. <laughs> <laughs> and just caused the whole team to start laughing. So I was like, I like him for that. Just, just levity. I just ap appreciated that for sure. Did he tip the bat boy? Because, you know, they, like the clubhouse guys get big. There's they didn't tip me nothing. There's a lot no. of tipping for the clubhouse you know, guys. The, I think the guy only makes 50 bucks a game. So it's like, you got to do it for the love. And I was like, what, do you, what else do you do to the like, normal bat boys? Like, oh, I work at Taco, Taco Bell. <laughs> <laughs> One game that I was bat boy for the Yankees, and they actually, uh, David Wells was pitching for the Yankees. And uh, I'm 100% I'm, I'm sure that he gave up three home runs on three pitches in a row. I don't know if anybody remembers the series of three or four years ago. And he just served up three homers in a row. And uh, the game was over. They lost. I went back to the Hyatt with Damon. And, and, and we went up to the nice old bar up there that's got the cool uh, old guy that get, knows everything about everybody. And he's been there from the beginning. So the stories are great. And then in comes David Wells. And he's all banged up already. He's like, Ugh. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, nice pitching tonight. How about those home runs? He's like, ah, at least I'm drunk. <laughs> Shockingly, we now have another story that involves David Wells and strippers. Here's the Toronto Star's Richard Griffin. When, when he was traded from the uh, Yankees to the uh, Jays at spring training, um, Mark Zielinski, who's still on the beat with us, um, he and I were at spring training together, and our assignment was to find David Wells. So we went to, what's that place next to the ballpark uh, in Tampa, the peeler joint? The, the one where... How would I know? <laughs> anyway, it's famous. And, and I'm getting old, and, and, and I don't remember the I name of the place. The Jennifer, do you know? No, I'm just going to keep a very close eye on expenses next year, I think. <laughs> but but here, here's, the, here's, the crunch, here's the crunch story, is that... Uh, um, we, we go to this peeler joint, Mark and I, to find and get a, a quote from uh, David Wells about coming to the Blue Jays. I also want to know why it took two of you. <laughs> <laughs> Zorro was a designated driver. Uh, <laughs> well, that seems unusual. But, but uh, <laughs> we... we we go there and we're in the parking lot and, and they, I said... I, I talked my way out of a cover charge by saying I had to go in and see David Wells. So I saved $12 there. And I go in and I have to buy a pocket full of uh, poker chips that you, gets you one lap dance each. And uh, so, that, like, I'm thinking, oh, my God, he better be here. And then an hour later, I come out and he's not there. And, and Zorro says, what took you so long? I say, well, I got one chip left. <laughs> and I filed it on my expense account. And they took it. No, I, was it you? You took it. Yes. It <laughs> Did I? Was I there? Yeah, you were there. You took it. Must Shame on you. Yeah. That's a, that sets a precedent. Now, you know when teams have autograph night or pizza Tuesdays? Those are promotional ideas that are easy to come up with and easy to execute. Now, it's the quote-unquote creative ones, usually drummed up by some young go-getter in the back of the GM's office, that can go one of two ways. Jesse Goldberg Strassler, play-by-play man for the Lansing Lugnuts, has ridden the buses down in the minors for a while now and has witnessed one such brainwave. Which of the two ways did it go? You decide. In Brockton, Massachusetts, we did Salute to Blindness Night. <laughs> Wait. This included telling all of the fans, close your eyes and listen to the sounds of the game, which is great if there were no such thing as foul balls.
then, on top of that, we had an inning where the idea was we would put the voice of our broadcaster, the number one guy, Dave Raymond, out over the PA, and that way fans could hear the sounds of that radio broadcast, and it was as if they were listening to that game at home. The players could hear him. <laughs> and so when he says something like stepping up to the plate, I don't know, Ben Johnson batting 182, he's gone cold recently. <laughs> The umpires did not appreciate either. <laughs> that was the quickest inning ever. <laughs> Players were running up to home plate to swing at the first pitch just so their at-bat could conclude. And you've never seen a shortstop getting ready to field what the voice of God is saying to everyone is a routine ground ball. <laughs> Well, alrighty, that wraps up another edition of Pitch Talks. Email any questions, comments, marriage proposals to us at info at homestandsports.com. Don't forget to hit our website, homestandsports.com, for all things Pitch Talks. And you can find us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, where we are at Pitch Talks. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Good night, everybody. Pitch Talk's love theme is by Steve Kreklo on Twitter at K-R-E-C-K-L-O. Music today by Steve Kreklo and Todor Kobakov on Twitter at K-O-B-O-K-O-V. Pitch Talks is a homestand sports production.